Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Sabah Show, um, the round 18 recap. Um, this round seemed like it went forever because of all the COVID shit happening, you know, the rearranging of fixtures. And, you know, there was a bit of drama down to the last game of the round where I think five plays went out um, due to the rugby game or something, attending the rugby game, which was an exposure site. But look, hopefully we get through the rest of the season nice and smooth i don't think it will be the case but hopefully you know the afl can do a good job in bringing us a full 23 round season but anyway let's get into the recap before we begin make sure to um like the video um if you enjoy this and subscribe to the channel so you can be reminded of all the recaps i do on mondays and the previews for the round i do on thursdays anyway let's get into the recap um, first up, all the way back on Thursday night, uh, was the Cats and Dockers. Um, this one was pretty much dominated from the very start by Geelong. Um, Possession-wise, uh, marks inside 50. You know, the Cats were just able to dictate how the Dockers played. Um, they stuck to their game plan pretty much all game, even despite the really wet conditions at times. Um, the only aspect that Freo were winning was in the ruck. Sean Darcy was a monster, I think, 10 minutes into the second quarter. He had 13 touches, which is just, that's midfielder numbers. It's very unfortunate that he came off. Sonny Walters, he had a very, very bad game on the night. Um, just... He was doing all sorts of uncharacteristic shit, even, you know, taking shots on goal. He was just missing them. You know, it wasn't his night. It wasn't anyone's night, really. They were turning the ball over, trying to do switches at the halfback flank, you know, stuff under that they weren't under pressure for. And the Cats were dominating on the fast break. Um, there were a few similarities from the Geelong Carlton game last week. Um, Fremantle couldn't manufacture scores, really. Their key tools were shut down um, very well. And I think part of that is the conditions that they were playing in um, that made it tough, but also because they were just bombing it forward. And if you do that, you're going to get punished. The Cats will take marks. It's easy pickings for them. So, yeah, look, the Cats, they were... It was that easy for them that they could just do little chip kicks. If they were 45 meters out, they could find a target 30 out. So pretty poor by the Dockers, but another strong win for the Cats. Percentage boost for them. Um, you know, that'll be really important for a very tight race up the top for those top two spots. And now we move on to Friday night. Brisbane played Richmond and um, this game... Look, Richmond showed, um, they came in with the response that they probably needed to show one week earlier. Um, if there's any game you drop, it would probably be this one that was deemed acceptable. Um, they played Brisbane away from home. It would have been home game. Fair resilience to Richmond. You know, they could have coughed this one up. Dusty Martin out is out for the season. Damn. So, interesting to see how Richmond cover his presence. You can't cover his presence, but... Interesting to see what they try to do to, you know, make up for that. It's a big loss for them. A very big loss. It's, he's their game changer. So, the pressure is on a lot of the other players' shoulders. They went from 12th and people writing them off to now in the top 8. Or, I think they're ninth. So, they're right there. But, Matthew Parker, very good um, in. They got him in the mid-season draft, Richmond. And he... They put him in the middle, so he's probably the game changer, you know, he's got the tats, he doesn't have the game, like, he's only probably got about, I reckon, 25 games under his belt, but fair play to him, he played a pretty strong game, he faded out just a little bit later on in the game, but, but a very good performance by him. Um, Brisbane, you know, noticeably struggling without Hipwood. You know, there was a bit more reliance on the midfielders to score goals, and that usually happens every week with the Lions. I think Zorko kicked three behinds, McCluggage kicked a goal, um, Zach Bailey kicked a goal. You know, those guys, they're going to be even more important now. Um, but look, you really want your small forwards to be helping out now because Danaher can't do it all. So... It's going to be interesting to see where the Lions manufacture their goals from. You could go as far to say that it could be alarm bells for Brisbane. 
Um, they could be in that, you know, that fifth spot, the odd one out um, of that top five group as such. So they've got to be careful. But yeah, fair play to Richmond. You know, Rewalt came up huge. Six goals in his 300th game. We go to Saturday Arvo now. There were only three games on Saturday Arvo because a few got postponed. Um, Port Adelaide played St Kilda in this one. You know, it was a bit of an eyesore, you know, watching this one because both sides couldn't take their opportunities. There was a period in, th in the third quarter where no one could kick a goal for their life. You know, the key forwards, they struggled all day except maybe Georgiades because I think he kicked four and he was probably the difference maker. Um, Charlie Dixon got shut down again. And look, the Saints went with them all day. The power I predicted this, I think with that forward dynamic, um, it's really good that Georgiades is performing because it puts a bit of doubt into the defenders' minds, right? Do you go to Dixon and do you double him? Or do you go one-on-one? -on -one? Because you have to put some attention into Georgiades. Um, and if it's not that, then you've also got to worry about a bunch of smalls as well. I mean, they're missing them now. They don't have Butters and they don't have Rosie. Um, but if those two are in, you know, who, who do you go to? When they're at their best, it's an interesting dynamic they've got going there. And you've even got Marshall as well. So three talls is a bit of a problem, but Marshall went back as well. So there's a lot of, of uh, flexibility that Ken Hinckley can do uh, with all these tools because he's got a shit ton of them. He's got Laddams there as well and Lysette, obviously. This one was pretty entertaining. It was an arm wrestle for most of the game. Um, some very good midfield matchups. Jack Steele and Ollie Wines going head to head. Jack Steele had a very big game again. You know, he's probably a smoky Brownlow pick. I think every week I'm saying that a different player is a smoky Brownlow pick, but there's probably six good players up at the top, five to six. Um, they could win the Brownlow this year. It's a very open field. Um, but look, Port just. They just showed too much class. Both sides looked very good when they were going through the corridor, as you do. But I think Port just had a little bit more strength and a bit more class. You know, they won more pressure moments. I think earlier on when Port was struggling, Carl Amon was huge. Um, you know, just kicking a couple crucial goals when they just couldn't get going. I think he had two of, two of their three or four goals to the half. And one of them was like off a couple steps, a snap from 40. So, mate, he's one of the most underrated players in the league. He's got, you know, pace along that wing. You know, he can, he wins a lot of one-on-one -on -one contests. I think more than people give him respect for. Um, and he's got a brilliant, brilliant kick on him. So, huge shout out to Carl Amon. He's a, a very satisfying player to watch. And now we move on to the Suns and the Bulldogs. And the Suns hung around. Um, the Dogs, you know, they did not play in first gear at one point during this game. It was, it took the likes of, you know, Jack McRae to hit the scoreboard in the second quarter when they, you know, had the upper hand. I think he kicked two and he's kicked like two or three for the season. So they're relying on plays like that. But look... Jamara Hagen, he looked absolutely brilliant. That snap from the pocket, I believe it was in the third quarter. Ridiculous finish. I think it was just satisfying how the ball went that high and then it just went straight through the middle. Absolutely satisfying and he had a very good game. He kicked four or three, you know, and that was, that was with Norton in the side. So imagine if all their keys are firing. They're going to get nine or ten between them. And you will not lose too many games with that powerhouse of a forward line. Look, the Suns, their inexperience cost them once again. Just, you know, lack of smarts at times, a bit of irrational decision making, just game IQ, losing the one on ones. There's a lot of things um, that they let themselves down in doing. Especially when they had the lead, you know, they had a chance and then they just coughed it up. But it, at this point, I think it's been mentioned in the media a lot, you can't say this side is that young anymore and that inexperienced because, you know, they've got a lot of guys that have 50 games under the belt. Sure, they've got a few. Well, they've got, they've got a fair few that are under that 50-game mark, but 
there's still a lot that are over and you know some kids are playing their third and fourth season so they're not exactly you know they're not new to the game yeah look these guys i mean every game's a learning experience for them but there's got to be a day where it clicks and i mean they've really improved the last few weeks they they only lost this one by 11 points but still you know those little things are just letting them down the first quarter for them was very good to watch. Nick Holman kicked three in one of the weirdest quarters I've seen from him. In that quarter, their ball movement was less erratic. They weren't stopping. The ball was going over the back and they were just running, streaming into goal. And that's how you want to play. That's an entertaining brand of football for the fans. And it's an entertaining brand of football that'll get you wins. They've got to learn to just stick to that game plan more often and then find a way to get around the game plan um, if the opposition adjusts to it. And then we move to probably what was the match of the round. The Hawks played the Ds, and this one was a draw, and I only watched the last quarter. But it was an absolute nail-biter. Luke Bruce, under pressure, he's the only or only experienced forward in this Hawks side. And he finished under pressure. Um, brilliant kick. I was up in my seat, and it was 10.30 at night, and people were trying to sleep, but I didn't care. It was a great game. Um, look, the loophole to breaking the Ds down is just get that ball to ground, and the Hawks did that. Um, and no matter how inexperienced your forward line is, they can do something with that, especially your small forwards. And I saw something in Tyler Brockman that I haven't seen in his first few games earlier this season. Um, you know, he just had a few moments where he was showing his smarts off. I think there was a really... Um, good moment where he was really composed and just hit a target instead of blazing away and just having an irrational shot on goal um tom mitchell absolutely huge in the third i think people have said he gets 50 touches for doing nothing or he does nothing with those 50 touches he kicked a goal um and then missed a shot under pressure that he probably should have kicked but it was on his opposite foot i think um but look he kicked a huge goal in the third and he was Winning some big moments, some big ground ball. Um, you know, just the things you expect from Tom Mitchell and then some on top, which was really crucial to winning the game. But really, really positive signs for the Hawks. Um, I thought they were going to get absolutely flogged in this one. You know, they're depleted. But I think moments like, you know, Lockie Bramble, there was a moment he sprinted through the middle of the ground off the centre bounce. He was sitting on the edge of the probably at center half back and just stream right through um, and got the hands and went went for a run right past Max Gore and he lost the handle but moments like that you know Hawks Hawks players that have they've got no pressure on them because they're nice and young they just don't give a shit um, and he didn't give a shit so I'm pretty sure that led to a goal you know Denver Granger Barras some big moments from him Kaczynski you know he's probably ruining his missed opportunities he had a couple shots on goal in the third or fourth quarter um, that you know could have given him a sizable advantage um, later on in the game and that probably could have given them the win but look the Hawks they'll be elated with their performance um, you know against the odds probably going at 10 bucks on sports bet and the D's Man, they, you just, you just don't know. Will those two points cost them a top two spot? It's crucial. And this is one they shouldn't have dropped, but they did. So we move to the Sunday games. I only covered two of these. Um, North played Essendon. Um, Essendon got over the line as predicted. Um, you know, Jake Stringer was missing pretty much all game until the last quarter and a bit. He kicked four goals. Don't know how that happened. You know, North, as we've said every week, they're constantly improving. They got absolutely demolished by this mob earlier in the year. Um, but, you know, they were with them for pretty much the entirety of the game. And, you know, every time the Bombers seemed like they were going to get away, North, right to the very end, were, you know, coming back with the responses, but their response wasn't enough. Um... Look for the Bombers, their debuton, um, Sam Durham. He was pretty good um, on the outer side wing. You know, he was pretty important in some chains. Um, he did some nice things. He didn't get a lot of the football, but 
you know, I think they found another one on top of all the damn talent they have in their football side. Look, the Bombers, they look very lethargic earlier on. They look like witches' hats. North were just doing whatever they wanted. They probably should have capitalized a bit more earlier on, and that's probably why the Bombers ran over the top of them. Look, shout out to Curtis T Taylor. He had a very huge last quarter. He, there was one moment he intercepted um, a little switch and then had a beautiful finish. Um, it was like a, a nice little snap. Um, when North looked out of the contest, I think they were down 20 and that brought it back to 14 and gave us a little bit of hope that North could win this one. And then he just had this freak shot from the boundary. The wind was pretty swirly all day and he just absolutely dobbed that. Um, and from players, you know, young, early 20s, um, that's a really positive sign. Um, on top of all the talent that we, we mentioned in last week's episode with Thomas, um, he had a very good game, uh, Phillips, you know, Davies Uniac, all those guys. Yeah, a pretty good performance from the Bombers. Um, and look, they are, they're amongst it. They are amongst it. That is an absolute scrap between 8th and 13th spots now. 13th, I know, 13th is still in it, and we're going to talk about him right now. It is Carlton Collingwood, and we looked shot in the first three quarters, you know. We looked disgusting. Honestly, me swearing at Plowman, Nunes, and I think it was Williams all day. Williams for probably faking 15,000 injuries. Um, Nunes for just doing hat kicks, and Plowman pretty much making Ollie Henry look like Jesus and, you know, dropping chess marks. Yeah, but then the last quarter happened and it gave me very similar vibes to the Carlton Adelaide dominance we had probably a month ago. In the first half, we looked like we were turning an out number into a disadvantage for us. We were just muddling it up and we couldn't get the ball forward and we couldn't, you know, gain any continuity. And then in the second half, Harry's mark started sticking. I don't know if that was a fatigue thing. Um, and then when the ball hit the ground, it wasn't, you know, easily getting run out um, by the pies as it was earlier on. It was getting locked in there and the, you know, the small forwards were having an impact, whether that was tackling, um, like Matty always, he had some good tackling efforts and then Eddie kicked that beautiful goal to put us in front. So good signs from Ollie Henry, speaking of which, um, you know. He hadn't shown too much in his like first four games, but this I think was his, his fifth. And you know, he performed three goals. Um, that's a strong return from, you know, one of your young players, especially um, a fifth gamer. So look, Dugowie tried hard. Um, this, this one was for Sergio Silvani, um, Jack Silvani's grandfather, or Steven Silvani's father. Um, Jack Silvani, I think he kicked one, and he took this great hang on the, uh, the interchange bench wing. Um, a nice little hang he got up there. But look, after the game, very emotional. And the Blues, man, we needed to do this for him. Um, and we did. So fair play to us. That was absolutely huge for us. Um, and believe it or not, we're a win out of the eight. As crazy as that sounds, we don't have the greatest percentage, but we're a win out. I think Grundy started off very well. Um, and then he just... He got dominated by TDK and Jack Silvani. I don't know what happened with him yesterday. We just put it all together. What we were lacking in the first three, you know, the defensive structure was there. The Pies could not get that out. Every time they kicked it out, we were there. Um, even if they were in transition, we were there. So they just couldn't get it past the, the forward 50. Carlton, you know, we do not play well in fourth quarters and we played very damn well. I think it was a 37 point swing in one quarter against the number one fourth quarter side in this month. So that's showing something. And before we finish, um, I'm going to, you know, give my weekly Sam Wall shout out. That goal was nuts. Gave me extreme Carlton Frio vibes, um, but I went absolutely bonkers when he kicked that. I just screamed and I don't think the neighbors would approve, but you do what you gotta do as a Colton supporter. Anyway, let's just say I thoroughly enjoyed that one uh, against the arch rivals. And just quickly, we'll skim over the other two games. Um, Sydney GWS, man, um, Sydney, you know, very strong resilience to come back 
from what looked like it was going to be a blowout very early on. Um, you know, Josh Cully got injured, Matt Flynn got injured, so they pretty much, you know, it was pretty much a nightmare day for GWS in what looked like was going to be a really good day. But yeah, the Swans, you know, they've solidified that spot. They're not going to be dropping out. It's probably going to be West Coast, if anything, but they brought up a very, very important win against the Crows, and I didn't see a minute of that one. Um, but looks like they did it very comprehensively. So fair play to them. They needed that win, um, and they've got it. They've got a little buffer, but they're probably going to need to win three or four of their final five games um, in order to, you know, hold on to that top eight spot. Anyway, it has been a pleasure. Um, I hope you enjoyed the round 18 recap. Uh, we'll see you on Thursday for the game preview um, for round 19. Yeah, hope you enjoyed. And I will see you later. Peace out.